Hey guys, it's Todd the Cybertruck Truck Guy, and today I'm going to be doing a reaction video to a recently released TFL video that talked about the off-road capability of the Cybertruck. Now, they kind of buried the lead here because the video itself was about the Tesla Model Y's off-road ability, and then in the middle of the video, they kind of went off on this tangent talking about the Cybertruck. And I had actually watched this video and I got to right about the point where they started talking about the Cybertruck. And then I stopped watching it because I was like, ah, it's not really telling me anything I care about. So then on the Cybertruck owners forum, I saw a reference to this and I went and I thought, oh, I didn't see that part. So I watched it and it got me worked up enough that I thought I'm going to make a video. So some of you guys have asked me to do some more reaction videos to some other YouTubers. And uh, this is a good illustration of, I think, a place where I actually have something relevant to say. So um, we're going to go ahead and jump into the video. And then uh, we'll just, uh, I'll just insert these clips at different points uh, throughout the video. So, uh, oh, also, since some of you complained about the sound, I got a, a better microphone here. So I think we got better sound uh, when we're not in the truck now. Uh, and some interesting comments I was reading actually in that Jalopnik article, right? Yep. So jumping right in here, I tried to find the Jalopnik article that they were referencing. And I just want to point out that it's general courtesy that if you're going to criticize someone, put a link to the source in your notes so that people that want to inspect it can go in and check it out. And um, they were saying, you know, forget the Model Y, it's never going to be an off-roader. Agree with that. And then they said, but wait till the Cybertruck comes out. That's going to blow everything out of the water. And this is actually, once again, I completely disagree with this. So here he says that the article said that the Cybertruck will, quote unquote, blow everything else out of the water. And I don't know, is that is that really what it said? Or is he taking editorial license or just paraphrasing it? I don't know. But he actually said, I disagree with it. So this is where I want to mention something that I've had a lot of people comment on, which is they think that TFL is biased against Tesla. I, as far as I can tell, I haven't seen that they're biased against Tesla. What I can tell you a bias that I notice a lot is their bias towards Jeeps. They really like Jeeps. They like their capability, especially on super technical off-roading. And I think that they are, I think really what they're doing is they're comparing this to a Jeep um, and it's specifically a Jeep Rubicon, the most stock, the best stock off-road vehicle, I think in their opinion. There's a form of argumentation that is called the straw man argument and it's a logical fallacy. And basically what it does is it takes the weakest arguments of your opponent and then it knocks them over as if your point is better because you didn't actually address what your opponent was actually saying. So I would say that the Cybertruck as a stock vehicle will blow everything else out of the water when it comes to how most people actually go off-roading. And I think that the what they're doing here is they're taking a narrow part of off-roading so they're totally ignoring high-speed off-roading, and they're not really talking about overlanding. They're really just talking about slow, technical uh, trail riding on very, very difficult terrain. So that is their, that's the first thing that they're doing here is they're oversimplifying what off-roading is, and then they're essentially saying, well, the Cybertruck won't be able to do in this narrow case, what this particular kind of vehicle will do, so I disagree that it will blow everyone else out of the water. That's how I interpret this. So let's uh, let's go on. Because if you look at what you need for off-road ability, you need ground clearance, you need gearing, you need articulation, uh, you need underbody protection, right? Okay, so here's he's saying, here's what you need to go off-roading. You need underbody protection, you need uh, articulation of the tires, and uh, when you're done with this video, if you haven't watched my video on suspension, I explain that more and I'll put a link at the end of the video too. But that, that, that will really help contextualize this. So underbody protection, wheel articulation, clearance, 
and gearing. And then he goes on to say, of which supposedly the Cybertruck has, as in, I don't know, like to me, he's already sort of dismissing it. He's acknowledging Cybertruck has all those things. In fact, it's the only stock vehicle that has all those things, except maybe the Rubicon. I don't know what kind of underbody protection it has. It has, according to the Motor Trend article I referred to in um, in that same my suspension video, it has an armored undercarriage. And it would make sense. Why wouldn't you put a piece of steel under there if it's going to go off-roading? Of course, it's going to have that. It has very, very good wheel articulation. Again, in that same article, they said it looked like it had about 14 inches of wheel articulation, which is extremely good. It has the best clearance of any stock vehicle. Any vehicle, Jeep Rubicon, Ford Raptor, has the most clearance of anyone. And that's gonna become important when I'm gonna tell you what how what is a vehicle you should really be comparing the Cybertruck to as far as off-roading. And you're gonna be, I think you're gonna be surprised by the, by the comparison. And then the last one is gearing. Now, this is where I think they do, they might have a point. We'll have to wait until the Cybertruck comes out, but there is an advantage that ICE vehicles have in using these gearboxes that they can use different gearing ratios to get more torque at lower RPMs in narrow, not lower RPMs, lower power usage than what the power usage, power consumption in terms of watts, compare watts to watts. The, the, in that particular case, I think that an ICE vehicle will be more efficient. It's like the one freaking in case where the ICE vehicle is gonna be more efficient. But I think, it, I think it probably will be. And I think that's a fair criticism. I don't think you would say, oh, that makes it a crappy vehicle. I think that's ridiculous which I'll explain more on my series about why the Cybertruck is the ultimate adventure vehicle. But that's just silly. So he's acknowledging it has all the components, and, and I would say it even has some things in terms of the clearance no other stock vehicle has. Also, the wheel articulation. I don't think this Rubicon has 14 inches of wheel articulation. So anyway, let's keep going. And in theory, the Cybertruck should have a lot of that. But the thing is, is... I mean, what does he mean in theory it should have a lot of that? What does that even mean? It's going to have, uh, what, what is he, what, is he saying that Tesla just built, the, 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 what they put out there, they're not going to actually build it? He says it in such a cavalier attitude, like, well, in theory, I, it's, it's in their spec sheet. Tesla is guilty of doing a lot of things wrong, missing production dates. Um, overcomplicating engineering processes as they've learned how to do. They're, look, they're guilty of a lot. One thing they're not guilty of is promising a feature or a set of specifications. And then when that vehicle is actually delivered, it not being there. That's the one thing they have done. They have been very good at doing. In most cases, their vehicles, when they're released, are superior to the specs that they give during the unveil. So I just think it's one of those things where he's sort of using voice tone and body language to essentially say, oh, the Cybertruck sucks without actually saying, oh, it's not gonna have those things. And in theory, the Cybertruck should have a lot of that. But the thing is, is a 1949 Willys has a lot of that too, right? Yeah. And okay, so number one, do you see them driving 1949 Jeep Willys around? No. Do you see them driving 1957, well, they might have a 57 Chevy. Do you see them driving around Studebakers and Cadillacs? I mean, let me, let me rephrase that article. You know, what, what do you need to drive? What do you need to drive? You need, a wee, you need wheels and an engine and uh, a seat and a steering wheel. It's the same technology we had 50 years ago. I mean, what's the big deal? It, it has all the same things we had 50 years. I mean, how ludicrous can you be? Uh, what, a, what an insane way to rationalize dismissing the Cybertruck by basically going back to the, the utility factor of the original Jeep as it would be to go back to the original car. You had everything you needed to travel with a Model T. What's the big deal? The Cybertruck is like the Model T. My, it's a toss-up, really. Both have wheels, both have steering wheels, both have seats, both get you to point A to point B. What's the big deal? 
It's insane. Again, this is one of those this is one of these tactics that people use to dismiss something, but it's like they're not dri- they're not driving anything that was built, you know, more than five years ago, because it's not just about that. That's it's crazy. If you look at the off road tech, the stuff that you needed back in 1949 is the stuff you still need in 2020, 2021, and you're not going to improve, in my opinion, on the old Willys formula of solid axles, and most importantly lightweight okay you're not going to improve on the old willies formula the point is no the solid act there is no magic to a solid axle if you can achieve if you can the, the the magic is in the results and if you come with a different way which is independent motors two motors with independent suspension that thrashes solid axle again we'll go back and watch my video on suspension they're not, they're not in the same category. And then, so he talks about weight. Okay, now, no, I'm not gonna talk about that yet. I'm gonna do the comparison here in a second. Because just like on-road, the enemy to off-road is weight. Uh, the lighter the weight, the easier it is to crawl up obstacles to maneuver difficult situations. Okay, the enemy to off-road is weight. I mean, period. So, theoretically, a, I guess a skateboard is the ultimate off-road, like an electric skateboard is the ultimate off-road vehicle because it's, it's, it's the lightest. The, the fallacy to isolate one factor and then say this is the only factor or the most important factor. First of all, you haven't addressed all kinds of off-roading. And secondly, now you're saying that the most important factor is weight. You uh, take that to either logical end and it's a fallacy. It is always a compromise between choices around weight and power and efficiency and cost. I mean, how much do you think Bigfoot weighs? You know, one of those monster trucks that have those tires weigh more than a Jeep Willie, but it can go over rocks. It's nuts. It's not just weight. It's a combination of factors. And so when you have one factor that is suboptimal, you can offset that with another factor that brings balance to the equation. So I would say it's obviously true that if you, all things being equal, weight is a big deal. But he's completely ignoring the the other factors of the Cybertruck, such as its clearance and its suspension which can go a long way towards offsetting weight. The Cybertruck, from what you've seen, right, is going to be huge and is going to be monstrously heavy. Okay, so he's saying here, again, he's saying it's going to be huge, dimensionally huge and monstrously heavy. Okay, well, instead of just generalizing, why don't you actually go out and try and find a vehicle that is as comparable to the Cybertruck as possible and look at whether or not that has the off-road capability that you could say has the potential to blow things away. So, and, and you have to use something that's a stock vehicle. You can't go look at custom rigs. So uh, there is a stock vehicle out there. There's a stock vehicle out there that the, the, um, wheelbase is very close to the cyber truck. So that's both the wheels from right to left and the wheels from front to back. And that is a good representation of the size and the footprint and you know the, those kinds of things. It's got a stock clearance of 16 inches. It does have 37 inch stock tires instead of the 35 inch stock tires that are gonna come with the Cybertruck. And it is, uh, it is similar in weight. So it's stock weight is 55, to 6,000 pounds, and it has a 3,500 pound payload capacity. So that's not a Raptor. So Raptor has 12 inches of clearance, not 16, and it only has about 1,500 pounds of payload capacity, not 3,500. So what uh, what stock vehicle do you guys think I'm talking about? Probably, you'll probably be surprised. I'm talking about the actual military grade Humvee the original Humvee. When you look at the dimensions, 
the clearance, the wheelbase, the weight, all of those things are very close to the Cybertruck. So now um, I'm gonna put some videos, just a couple of quick highlights, but I'd encourage you to go look at some of the things that the um, Humvee can do. And uh, tell me that that doesn't have the potential to blow everything else out of the water. Now, it's possible that the Cybertruck won't be able to match what the Humvee can do, but there's no, there's no practical reason why it can't. And so there's a couple of big things that, that they're missing too. So I talked about their Jeep bias. I'm getting beeped at. So I think that they're biased towards Jeeps. And one of the things that they're not talking about is the Jeep's tendency to flip and roll over. And uh, same with those old willies. Uh, one of the compromises that all these classic off-road vehicles have, they, they get the clearance and they get the small size, but they do so at having incredibly high centers of gravity. A Jeep is one of the most dangerous vehicles out there in terms of safety. It's very prone to rollovers. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube showing Jeeps uh, rolling over in off-road situations. That's going to be almost impossible to do with the Cybertruck. So the other thing that the Jeep has a hard time doing are something that I, I don't know what to call them, but I, I will, I'll just call them like a, a lateral traverse where when you're off-roading, a lot of times there's a washout and you have to go up on a hillside to get around the washout. And uh, that is really hairy with Jeeps, um, especially if you have any kind of weight on the roof, which a lot of people do when they go off-roading and they put all kinds of crap up on the, on the roof. And the uh, Cybertruck is going to stick to the hillside like glue. So I actually think there's going to be a bunch of scenarios. So let me tell you all the scenarios. I think the Cybertruck will crush the Jeep. So it's going to, first of all, crush the Jeep on the ride, getting to your off-road area and the ride coming back. It's going to crush the Jeep in any kind of high-speed off-roading. And uh, I'm telling you, it's fun to do, and Cybertruck people are going to go do it. Desert racing, high-speed back road uh, driving, it's a blast. The Jeep is not. Do you, you take a corner going too fast in a Jeep, sayonara. You are hopefully not in an ambulance and total your, your Jeep. You just can't do it. Now, you can do some mods to Jeeps to make them more stable, push the wheels out further, get bigger tires, uh, to take the air pressure out. You could do things to make them more not as tippy, but it's it's not stock and it's not just like automatically. Automatically, the Cybertruck is going to be awesome. If you're going to camp, if you camp on the Cybertruck, you're going to have a level, environmentally controlled, dry place to camp. You're not going to do that in the Jeep. You're going to have to either get a rooftop tent, wobble around, be up high, no no environmental controls, or on a tent on the ground. And uh, you're going to be, you know, you're going to have limited carrying capacity. You're not going to be able to bring a bunch of people with you and a bunch of gear. It's going to be two people and gear, or you're going to start compromising the off-road capability of the Jeep. The Cybertruck is going to be very similar when it's loaded to an unarmored Humvee when it's fully loaded. So go watch some of those videos. If it doesn't blow your mind, uh, you haven't found the right videos because there are a ton of examples of the Humvee doing astonishing things and things that Jeep can't do because of the rollover risk or because it's actually too small. So um, the there are, what I'm trying to say is that if you limit what off-roading is to the very narrow thing that the Jeep is better at, then it, the Cybertruck won't blow it away. Or other, I guess, I can't think of anything else besides the Jeep that you would even say the Cybertruck won't be able to match. So every other vehicle, you know, the Raptor, most of the smaller trucks, some of them will be a little more nimble, but like my Tacoma, um, I would much rather have, I am, why, what am I saying? I am swapping my Tacoma for a Cybertruck. So um, there's a bunch of reasons for that. I don't want to get into them all here. I'm more wanting to focus on specifically going after their particular arguments and kind of there's their general dismissiveness about the Cybertruck's awesomeness off-road. 
Um, so anyway, let's um, let's finish. And we saw that with the Model X when we took it off road. One of the things that immediately happened was we were burning through a lot of power because uh, we had a very heavy vehicle with basically no low speed transfer case. So you couldn't multiply the power of those two motors, right? You mm -hmm. had to use it as they come out of the motors. There was no, there was no gearing to, to, to well, make Well, there's like the, the standard right. multiplication, but it's the same on or off road. Right, right. And so, so we were burning through tons of energy going up this, you know, maybe what was it, a mile uh, rocky top uh, test that we use. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it burned through a lot of power. The and then there's this issue of efficiency. And I think this is one that I am, um, I think they're probably right on that, that a uh, ICE vehicle because of the, the gearing can, will actually be a little more efficient. Other thing we did figure out with Tesla's though, is that they're uh, torque vectoring, let's call it that, where it sends power there. Are, the traction control works really well. Right. It, it sends power to where the wheel has traction. So that is a good thing, but that is only a small part of the equation. There's so much more that goes into actually being good off-road. Here's an example that the Willys, 1949 Willys, they had no torque vectoring. They had no uh, off-road uh, traction assist features. I can tell you that when you combine a, a good off-road vehicle with the modern traction control systems, it is an astonishing difference what they can do in terms of dealing with any kind of either like rock crawling where you're trying to get traction or mud or snow, any kind of loose surfaces, it makes a huge difference. And that's something that they minimize, but it actually, the capabilities of a, the capabilities of a less capable vehicle that has these modern traction control features are, it's a substantial equalizer compared to old, um, old off-road technology. The other thing too is going back to the power discussion, the Cybertruck people keep telling me, well, it's gonna be great at slow speed rock crawling because it's gonna have a bajillion pound feet of torque, which is true, but. Okay, this is not the first time that they do this in this video, but they basically say, oh yeah, you need to have all these things, and it does, but, okay, so I want them to tell me what stock vehicle has all the features the Cybertruck has from an adventure travel standpoint. 16 inches of suspension, 14 inches of wheel travel, four-wheel independent air suspension, complete body armor over and under, uh, Motor redundancy. How about that? I haven't even talked about that. I was going to talk about that. I will talk about that in one of my other future videos. But if you get the two motor or the three motor, hey, guess what? Take your willies below the engine, below the motor, below the transmission. You're screwed. Blow a motor on the Cybertruck. Oh, I have a backup motor. I can keep going. That, again, if you pick the criteria and you pick the limit, you can cherry pick, you can you can make, you you can dismiss it. But I want them to tell me what the best vehicle I can stock vehicle that is like the Cybertruck is the original Humvee. So I there's no other vehicle out there stock that comes close to the Cybertruck except the Jeep Rubicon in a narrow series of cases that specifically require a very small footprint in order to navigate the off-road terrain. This is a very, look, if that's what you're into, don't get the Cybertruck, okay? Don't, don't, don't get it. But if you want to drive on the other 99.999999999% of the roads out there, then get the Cybertruck. Once again, you can get a lot of wheel torque by multiplications, so like an old Willys would have had 45 horsepower, but it would have 513 gears. <laughs> you know, and in a granny low with 513 gears, the, the, the amount of torque that comes out of the engine is irrelevant because it's gonna have so much low speed gearing that it'll get you over whatever. So I'm excited to see where the electric off-roaders take us. Let's, let's just check off our list. So I started this discussion. Okay, so basically he's saying here that the uh, again, he's saying that the, to me, they're not saying that the Cybertruck 
will not have the same capacity as the these other vehicles in terms of its rock crawling ability or in terms of its off-road ability. Their, their main knock, if I was to sum it up, I would say their main knock is two things. Size in terms of, I mean main legitimate knock. I don't think weight's legitimate because I think that's why that's why Tesla has the adaptive air suspension. That that counteracts the weight issue. It really comes down to the size in terms of if you're in an environment that it's too narrow or you have to turn too sharply for the Cybertruck to actually make the corner. And those those are out there. Don't get me wrong. Those are out there. I've been on trails like that. And um, but so that that's true. And the other thing is energy use. And I think I would say TBD. My concern is not that if they had said, look, we think the Cybertruck outside of these factors is going to be amazing. But, you know, there's these legitimate issues. But that's not how they said it. They basically said it like Cybertruck. Look at how it you got technology from 70 years ago that, you know, you you can't it, you can't improve on except for things like adaptive air suspension, four wheel independent suspension, uh, advanced traction control. Uh, yeah, you can improve on it a, a crap ton. So um, so the energy issue, I think, is is legitimate, except that that's the last thing I would go on is in most cases, when you're doing this technical um rock crawling or low speed off-roading you're not going you these sections are short they're usually like a mile two miles three miles long and so what happens normally when you do this what you do is you drive to the off-road area that you're going to be in you burn up whatever an hour or two there and then you and then you have to get on the back roads to get to the trail you want and then you go up and down the trail a couple of times then you take a break, then you go to another trail and you do that a couple times, or you go up one and down the other, and then you you either go home or you go camp. And so the, the I question, and certainly I'm going to be getting the tri-motor, so I don't think the energy is going to be an issue because I just, yeah, I think you could say in that case, they probably will be less efficient than an ICE vehicle. The question is, will it actually matter to the way you ride? Because when you go up and down these trails, you're going a handful of miles a day. You're just not, you're not going far distances. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hesitant that the energy use thing is going to be an issue with the way most people are going to use the Cybertruck. And uh, and then when it comes to all the other kinds of off-roading that people do, like high-speed off-roading or overlanding, Cybertruck is going to be awesome. It's going to be way better than a Jeep. Way more, way more comfortable, way more capable in terms of gear, way more ability to bring more people along, way better platform for doing sleeping and uh, bringing other gear along that you would normally leave at home because there's not enough room or payload capacity in the Jeep, or you have to tow it, which you don't want to be towing in the back country. Yeah, you can technically do it. But uh, the reason one, another reason I like the Cybertruck so much is I can put 3,500 pounds of stuff in there and still go overlanding and still go in the back country that there's no other vehicle that can do that. You want to get up there, you're talking about a three quarter ton truck and have fun taking that off road. Yeah, your spine is going to be gone three hours into that experience. So um, and if you've never done it, well, just take my word for it. It's it's unpleasant. Okay, um, that's it for this uh, reaction video. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I think I'll have another video in the series on the Ultimate Adventure Vehicle uh, before Sunday. So um, it's Wednesday today. So yeah, I think I'll have it before Sunday, but we'll see how it goes. All right. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subs. So if you're not subbed and you enjoy the videos, please subscribe. And uh, I read all the comments. So if you have something you want me to see, go ahead and say it in the comments. All right. Um, thanks. And uh, we'll catch you later.